Tanzanian businessman uh, Mohamed Duji joined us here in Johannesburg yesterday to uh, speak to us on doing business in Tanzania as well as his company Metal Group. My colleague Godfrey Mutizwa caught up with him, first probing him about doing business under the leadership of the new president, President Samir Suluhu Hassan. Let's listen in. The six-phase government under President Samia Suluhu Hassan uh, has made uh, fantastic changes. Uh, FDI is flowing in like never seen be before. Uh, we're looking at uh, almost close to three and a half billion dollars coming in on a yearly basis. She's become very friendly and very open uh, for business and made the environment uh, very uh, great environment for people to come and invest, cutting down on bureaucracy. And of course, if you look at Tanzania, it's very strategically located. It's a gateway to Eastern Central Africa. It's bordering seven, eight countries. The country is huge, fantastic, you know, arable land, extractive industries, like you mentioned, natural gas. We have gold. We have beautiful tourism. Uh, we have the Serengeti, the Ngorongoro. And uh, we, she suddenly recently did this royal tour where she's promoting Tanzania all over the world because when we look at uh, Morocco and you look at Egypt, you have 10 million people uh, visiting and Tanzania is only one and a half million, so it's big sure. potential. 100%. Yes. No question about that. So as a group, yes. what are you guys doing? Because yes. I uh, quickly looked you up, of course, yes. uh, when I came in and yes. I realized yes. you were here, yes. we've got Bitvest. Yes. And I think when we, what, what we can also say when we talk about MET, uh, yes. we're talking about uh, uh, Tanzania Inc in terms yes. of your spread through yes. the economy. So what are you guys doing to take advantage of that improving environment that you're talking yes. about? So, so in short, basically, METL started off as a trading house, soft commodities, everything from sugar, rice, fertilizer. But we went into bubble gum and yeast and tractors <laughs> and motorcycles, and we export everything, uh, all commodities, whether it may be maize, cotton, uh, coffee, cocoa, sesame seeds, yellow gram. Then we moved into agro-processing. So we started competing with the Unilevers and the Procter and & Gamble's and uh, edible oils, cooking fats, margarines, uh, uh, detergents, uh, now competing with Coca-Cola, with the uh, Mo Cola sure. and the Mo Orange brands. So uh, textiles, so ginning, spinning, weaving, processing, mercerizing, dyeing, printing, knitting, garmenting. Um, so in general, we went into a lot of manufacturing. Then we turned our focus into agriculture so I'm one of the largest landowners and this year I don't know if you know what sisal is but it is it's natural fiber uh, now we're moving towards more green and we by end of this year will be the largest single producer of sisal in the world so sure. I've got tea gardens and then great distribution financial services so very diversified we contribute about 3.3 percent of the GDP of the country wow. we're present in about eight countries uh, but more importantly what makes me really proud that we're doing impact investment mm. and we're employing uh, 34,800 people. So after the government of the United Republic, we're the second largest employers in Tanzania. Yeah, so you have actually partly answered the next question I was going to ask because here in South Africa, one of the conversations we've been having, and we just had it with uh, uh, the CEO of the First Run Group as well, is around private businesses beginning to open up and releasing capital in the economy. Clearly, you are already releasing it. I want to know the focus areas. So the focus areas, you know, I'm looking at agriculture because agriculture, the areas where we can potentially create jobs, and that is uh, we are potentially trying to grow further in Sisal. We're going to macadamia. We're going to avocados. We're going to cashew and cashew processing, agro-processing. Uh, increasing textile, we're looking at denim, uh, being able to export. Uh, we're also looking at regional expansion. So mm. we're looking at Rwanda with East African bloc and Uganda uh, and Kenya, etc. So it's a huge market, almost 250 million people. I was waiting to hear the part where you say East Africa, Southern Africa. Of course, Tanzania is a member of SADC, and I yes. want to know if perhaps potentially you could be beginning to look at this part of the world, including here in South Africa. No, so w first and foremost, I have great respect for the president. Uh, I serve in his advisory board, President Cyril Ramaphosa, uh, and uh, we've been having uh, board meetings, and uh, one of the areas what I'm looking at is, again, you know, Africa has got a big uh, population, and majority of it is youth. Mm. and we need to look for solutions for them, how to make them entrepreneurs. And one of 
or two of the areas what I'm looking at is how to support the CISOL where the world demand is so huge and the supply is small uh, in, in, in being able to teach and coach so that they can do this outgrowth program uh, and where you can potentially buy the CISOL and then further export and then you can get foreign exchange coming in. Yeah. And two, also textile in South Africa is pretty much dead and we need to revive that and these are the areas where you can potentially you know employ a lot of people yeah so does it excite you when he begins to talk about uh, reducing the amount of imports that south africa uh, is uh, getting from outside the world for sure it excites me a lot because you know i mean when we import we use foreign exchange it puts unnecessary pressure yeah. on on the rand or in the tanzanian shilling Indeed. Uh, so I think he's, 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 he's a fantastic visionary leader and you know I know it's it's a tough economy yeah. and but but you know they say you know that to, to get to success there's yeah. no elevators or escalators yeah. you know yeah. Yeah. you need to do it step by step you know Indeed. but if, if you were to uh, be very frank with you yes. in terms of getting part of the uh, capital that you have part of the capital that you are trying to use and spread within the region mm -hmm. what would you say would be the key things that he ought to be addressing and i know you're sitting on the door on, on, on the board yes. but i'm giving you executive privilege inside my little office here and saying yes. to you be frank and tell him he needs to do x in order to free uh, this money that we know is sitting on balance sheets yeah i think you know what uh, uh, again you know banking is under high regu regulations and he needs to look for a way where you know interest rates are low people can borrow because the only way to be able to grow in any business uh, if you have limited capital is through debt mm. uh, SME lending very important microfin microfinance mm. very important uh, and focus on areas of agri agro processing and substitution of imports and manufacturing is what I feel I think South Africa has a competitive advantage on and that, that he needs to focus on. Yeah, I've been waiting for a conversation with someone like you for quite a while. Thank you. This is the age of the intra-African trade, launched by our leaders and among, uh, amidst very, uh, shall I say, great fanfare as a key solution to solving the problem of the continent in terms of uh, integrating our economies. I want your thoughts very quickly, then I want to know what you are doing about it. Yeah, so first, I think it's, it's a fantastic idea, uh, but we have to do it... On paper. Yes, on paper, but we have to do it correctly. And before I respond to that, we have the East African, before I spoke, speak about SADAC, but yes. we have the East African community where you harmonize external tariffs and then you trade uh, zero, zero in between, yeah. you know. And, and uh, it all looks great, but, you know, we need to also invest billions and billions of dollars in infrastructure. Uh, we need to give incentives to be able to trade within each other. I think as, 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 as an ideology, it's a fantastic mm. ideology, mm. but we need to execute yeah. now that, yeah. that, that, that this is the end game and we need to put milestones. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's, that's a fantastic is idea. Is East Africa working for you? I say, I ask the question uh, with caution because I know before the pandemic hit, yeah. East Africa was the fastest growing economic region on the African continent. But in terms of the liberalization that we're talking about, yeah. in terms of facilitating intra-regional trade, is East Africa working? I think if you see uh, Tanzania, because we were socialist, we were always very worried about Kenya. Ujama. Yeah, Ujama, right. Okay. And, okay. And, uh, but, you know, they kind of gave us advantage because initially uh, their goods coming into Tanzania had to be taxed 20, 15, 10, 5, and 0. Mm. And we went in 0 from day 1. So, you know, countries, all countries are very different. So we need to kind of treat them differently and economies are different and give advantage for those that are not really ready yeah. uh, and, and those that, are, that, that have prospered and, and are more advanced uh, have to be giving in, you mm. know. So, so I think it's more of a give and take, but in general I think it's, it's a brilliant idea, but we just need to be able to execute it. Have you been able to see any kind of benefit because of the uh, 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 intra-African trade agreement, the African continental free trade area? We had uh, the Secretary General here in studio, when was it, last week, yes. and one of the questions we asked him was whether there was beginning to be any business that's being generated under the AFCFTA. You're a business person. Yes. Have you started moving any of your goods under AFCFTA? I think so, for sure. Because today, I mean, today, why would a country that is short on rice import rice from Pakistan or another country or Vietnam while you have countries within Africa that have got surplus rice? 
Uh, so why should we not trade between each other? Because at the end of the day, we're helping each other and helping all African brothers and farmers. Mm. So, so I have taken that advantage. On the textile front, I've taken advantage. On the corn, the maize front, maize is a staple food. Yes. You know, why do we want to import maize from Mexico uh, while there is enough maize in, in Uganda or Zambia or Tanzania? You know, so inter-trade, I think it's, 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 it's positive and it has worked for me uh, to a certain level yeah. because I think we're still in very much in the initial stages. Yeah. But I was going to say, let's talk about uh, those things that are perhaps uh, inhibiting things from moving faster than you would like. You see, the problem is, you see, uh, again, the uh, problem is source of uh, origin, you know, is a yeah. issue. And uh, this is a very, a very key issue. area. You know, so now, for example, Tanzania has got enough rice, right? Now, Kenyans have a little bit of rice, or Ugandans could have a little bit of rice. And you don't want them to be importing rice from Pakistan and then coming and dumping the rice into Tanzanian market. Now you will be killing, it will work uh, vice versa against our farmers. So source of origin is very, very important and we need to be very, very transparent about that okay. uh, to be able to be successful. Absolutely, anything else that wrangles you? I'm giving you free license. No, no, I think, you know what, uh, South Africa has been very close to me and one, uh, our, our, our group has now grown to be almost uh, over a two billion dollar revenue company and partly because of again RMB uh, they've done a syndication with Rabo with City with Nedbank and Investec so when I was young uh, I, we were doing a 30 million dollar revenue business uh, and and I was outgrowing the banks in Tanzania at that time Barclays Tanzania had a two million dollar uh, 10 million dollar core capital they could only sure. lend me 2 million <laughs> so i was coming to south africa and that's why i'm here and and i'm very grateful for this great partnership that we have had and because of this we've grown to where we have grown to